Why is it that while some of us spend so much tr time trying to learn Power BI through books, through blogs, through videos, maybe even through training programs, but we still get stuck when it comes to crossing this learning to doing gap. We still get stuck when it comes time to apply everything that we have learned into a workplace, into our business setting. Now, is it possible that we're missing a key step? Now, e if that's you, or if that's a future you would like to avoid, make sure to watch this video till the end. Now, I have trained thousands of students all over the world through my Power BI training programs, and these are the best lessons that I have learned that you need to master Power BI. Uh, my name is Avi Singh. I'm a Microsoft MVP and a best-selling Power BI author. And if you want to become a Power BI pro, make sure to subscribe and click that bell so you are notified whenever we go live to answer your Power BI questions. So again, as I said, these are the lessons that we have uh, used inside our Learn Power BI family and the single goal of that program and for the steps I'm going to describe in this video are to get you from learning to doing. So let's get started with step number one. Now, when it comes to Power BI, a lot of people try learning Power BI through what I call the jigsaw puzzle of Google and YouTube. Now, here's the thing that this approach can and does work in some other settings. Now, I come uh, from an Excel background and Excel is a great example where of you can easily learn it through the jigsaw puzzle of Google and YouTube and Excel. Uh, uh, you can just look over somebody's shoulders, see what they're doing. And that's one more trick up your sleeve. Power BI, unfortunately, doesn't quite work that way. And the way Power BI is structured is that it has 20% of these core concepts that you must master, right? So that's, uh, and the good part is that if you do master these 20% core concepts, these are the ones which give you the 80% of the results, the classic 80, 20 rule. Now here's the other thing about these core concepts. So again, if you tried learning through Google and YouTube, you realize that it's nearly impossible to master these concepts, to piece it together. It's very frustrating and can take a long time. So the rule one here is that you do want these core concepts, this core knowledge to be pushed to you. What does that mean? It means that it's best if it comes through a structured program. Now, again, I'm not saying join my program, although our program is built around, uh, you know, really this focus on these core concepts, but find any teacher any any structured program out there uh, could be video based, could be uh, a book, uh, which works for you and which gives you that 20% core concept. So again, instead of trying to uh, piece it together, you know, you have it pushed to you. So that's the step one. Now, step two is actually the missing step, which I only recently discovered, and we're going to talk about it later. So let's go to step three, get real. Now, what am I talking about here? Now, what I'll say is if you really want to learn Power BI, you have to apply it. If you want to go from learning to do learning to doing, you got to apply what you're learning. And for that, you need two things. Make sure you have both ingredients. The first is real data. Now, of course, inside my class, I teach using sample data, right? There is AdventureWorks, there's Contosa and all of that. But guess what? Real data is always messy data. And that's what I love about real data. So you need that exposure. You need that experience. But this is where a lot of people go wrong. They miss the second key ingredient in this, which is you need a real client. Now, when I say client, it doesn't have to be, it could be internal or external. So you could be working as an employee or a consultant, or of course, a freelancer or intern or anything like that. But you have to be working with a real client. Now, working without a real client, so imagine you, there's a lot of real data out there. You can just go out to websites and just download real data sets. But that is like trying to learn tennis when all you're doing is hitting the ball against the wall. You're going to get really good at hitting the ball against the wall, but you're not really learning tennis. 
if you want to learn tennis, you have to play with a partner. You have to have that back and forth. And that's what's most crucial about this getting this real practice. So make sure you have real data and make sure you're working with a real client because Power BI, as I often talk about, is like peeling an onion. And you want that experience to peel that onion, go layer by layer with your BI. We're going to talk more about that in step five as well. So let's talk about step four. Now, hey, uh, we talked about this 80-20 rule, which definitely does apply. The 20% core concepts give you the 80% of the results. But then, of course, the next question is, what about the rest of the 80% of the knowledge? Do I not need it? Should I not care about it? Well, of course you need it. You should care about it. But this is, again, where a lot of people go wrong, which is they go on this endless quest to acquire that 80% of knowledge. Now, you realize that Power BI is knowledge or knowledge in any domain is near limitless. So their experience becomes this frustrating experience of climbing one sand dune after the next. And in fact, they get caught in what I call the learning paradox, which is the more they learn, the less they feel they know. And I have been trapped in this. And if you have felt this thing, let me know. So I've met people who've been in learning mode for years because they feel that they're not done. The more they learn, they're like, oh my God, I don't know this, I don't know that. Now that can be extremely frustrating and not just that, it takes you away from your real purpose of serving others using your Power BI knowledge. So how do you get out of this paradox? How do you get out of this trap? Now there are a few different ways, but I'm gonna give you one, which is to realize that the 80% of the learning, it's best to pull that to you when you need it. So again, this contrasts that with the 20% core concepts, which should be pushed to you. Somebody should just give it to you. But imagine if there was a, uh, you know, kind of a reference manual with all the remaining 80% of Power BI knowledge. Oh God, it'll be a pretty fat book. But it, it, people are often trying to read that book. They're trying to go out there and get this information there. Well, it's best to pull it when you need it. And so I'm going to talk about just in time versus just in case learning. But one connection that I want to make for you is that this only works if you have mastered the 20% core concepts. If you have mastered the 20% core concepts, then you know you can always layer upon it. As you run into something, you, you, you pull it and then you understand it. You can understand it using your core concept knowledge, right? So this does not work without the core concepts. Now, this, now let's talk about this just in time versus just in case. So again, um, you know, you get the idea like uh, for the pull approach to work, as and when you need something, like maybe a function you've never used before, it's okay to Google that and YouTube that and all that stuff. The fact that you can pull to yourself, as opposed to getting caught in that learning paradox where you're trying to learn everything just in case. Like, oh, I need to know everything just in case I need it. Well, relax a little bit and you know, know that you can pull the 80% to you when you need it piecemeal. So let's recap before we talk about the step five. The step one is that you want to focus on the 20% core concepts. And again, it works best if they get pushed to you through a structured program. Now, step two is a missing step. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, step three is to get real practice. And that involves two elements, which is working on a real data set and having a real client again could be internal or external so that you can have that back and forth because that's what the truly the nature of bi is uh step four is the re rest of the 80 percent knowledge don't go out and try to get all of it you can pull to yourself in just in time learning now hey i realize that this video is already kind of going long so what we're going to do is step two i want to do justice to it it is pretty awesome so we're going to cover that in the next video so stay tuned for that watch out for that but right now let's bring this video to finish and let's talk about step five and let's see if you can fill in the blanks power bi is dash bi now, there was a time when companies would routinely spend millions of dollars, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars, and take many years to implement BI using an antiquated old approach. I mean, the term used is like waterfall. But yeah, they would take, spend a lot of money, take a lot of time and to build this BI, which frankly didn't even work. Raise your hand, leave a comment if you've gone through that experience uh, or seen that in your company or another company. 
So Power BI, we have to realize it's a new breed of tool. And with this comes a new approach. Power BI is Agile BI. And that means when you implement Power BI, you must implement it. You should think about it in these quick cycles or sprints, these bursts. Now, if you think about it, if that's the nature of Power BI, shouldn't we also learn Power BI the same way? So that is a step five, which is that you must focus on learning Power BI in these agile learning cycles. So step by step. Now I'm going to give you just the highlights of this. And again, our whole program is structured around these key principles or key steps that I've talked about. So there's a lot more there. But to give you the highlights, the first thing that I would say is start small. Sometimes you can get into trouble if you bite off too big. And people I talk to my new students and they're like, oh, I'm trying to do this and it's not working. And like, oh, take a deep breath, start small. The next thing that I ask them to focus on is what I call quick wins. See if there's something quick that you can do is like, oh, wow, which which really is to motivate you to keep you going and say, hey, yep, I can do this. And the next big thing that I talk about is that once you've done some practice, had some quick wins is to look out for a shining beacon project. Now I'll tell you what the shining beacon project uh, you're going to know when that happens is that when you show that project or show that Power BI reported dashboard to somebody, they're going to go, well, they're going to go, whoa, right? They're going to say, how did you do that? Or they can say, well, can you can you do that for us? Like if you're showing an example of somebody else. Um, uh, so that's the Shining Beacon project. And again, I'm not going to go into too much detail into that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to link you to the article which talks about this approach of starting in an agile manner rather than that. And that has more details on the Shining Beacon project. Uh, so that's it, folks. Those are our five steps. Now, I know I didn't quite give you the step two. And, and as I mentioned, step two is just something which I recently learned. And I was kind of shocked myself that I've been teaching Power BI for so long. And I didn't even realize that I was missing this step. So we are going to cover that in the next video. Stay subscribed, stay tuned, and that'll be coming up next. And if you're just getting started or kept getting uh, keep getting stuck, then a good place to start here is our number one ranked Power BI tutorial. We're going to link to that in the corner and in the description. And of course, after that, if you would like to, we would love to welcome you inside our Learn Power BI family. Now, uh, click to watch our next video and don't forget to subscribe as that really helps support our channel and helps us put out great content. Until next time, power on my friend.